Uh, the next page is what you would get if you brought up the motor alarm display. You have A, B, and C temperature, inboard and outboard bearing, uh, the actual amperage, and the amps limit alarm and trip. And the next one is the UPS alarm page. Um, that's not really going to tell you a whole lot whether, whether the UPS is working or not. Um, and then one more back, we got the air page, air temperature monitor page. have inlet air, actual temperature, alarm and trip, and we also have a, a set point, there's a fan inside the enclosure that will set up and cool if the enclosure gets too hot. That's what that set point is for. set points which you're not going to get to uh, one more this one here is you guys can see it this is when I said you from the bottom of the screen you could uh, hit transmitter monitor this is the page that would come up here's all the all the same things we just went through temperatures vibration they're just set up in a line-by-line -line format. And as I said before, there's two pages of this. Um, besides temperatures and vibration, on the front first page at the top, you have a, it'll show you the actual position of your inlet guide vanes and your variable diffusers. Okay, page after that is the alarm and trip counter page. This is what it looks like. Um, I see most of these have a counter for both alarm and trip. Um, if you look down a couple, you have low oil pressure and low, low oil pressure. These only have, it's kind of, I know you can't read this very well, the one on the right side is trips, the one on, the column on the right is trips, the column on the left is alarms. Low oil pressure, both of them do not have an alarm, because if you lose that, it just shuts down, so they only have a trip counter. It's not going to, if you lose oil pressure, it's not going to set the buzzer off and wait for you. It's just going to shut it off. This uh, dirty primary inlet filter and secondary inlet yep. filter? Yep. Do you get foreign object damage coming in there? I mean, does it have a, like if a bird flew by, is it going to suck that bird up in there? I think it would stop. Yeah. <laughs> the filters would stop it. Oh. Now, if you get an alarm on, those, either one of those filters, does it uh, shut down the blower? No, that's, I was just going to get ready to say here, This, the, those two on the filters don't have a trip. They only alarm. So it's not going to shut down from a dirty air filter. What about a plug air filter? It won't shut it down. It'll just give you an alarm. There's a in the filter box, uh, if you're ever down there, there's the primary filters, and then there's the secondary filters, which are thicker. Mm -hmm. And behind that is noise baffling, which is some foam that kind of zigzags in and out. It lets the air through. I mean, you can, I mean, you can stick your hand through it, but this bird, this 
that came out of nowhere, wherever it's from. Mm -hmm. If it took a nosedive and it happened to make it through the first and second filter, it's not going to get past that sound baffling. It'd be pretty hard to get something all the way through everything. So what about a low inlet pressure? Sorry? A low inlet pressure on the suction side of the pump. Is there a switch for it? There's the, the surge switch. Yeah, that would take care of it. Um, that's that's going to if you if you develop a pressure on the inlet because you should normally have suction there. I can see if it's, if it's too low. We don't really have anything for that. No, no. I mean, the pump is starving for air. Don't really have one for that. I don't think. Um, so we'll do the surge. Yeah, we have to go into surge. That's what I was. Yeah. We had. If you're what. It would go into a surge, surge at that point, right? Yeah, if you had too much suction, you would probably go into a surge. Well, not, 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 not enough, I'm saying. I'm saying if the filters are plugged that, on. Or that, that would cause it all. I mean, if, if your filters are plugged up and you have too much suction there, okay? One thing, one thing that's going to happen, you have a differential pressure gauge on this, and I'm so, I missed it somewhere. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm glad you brought this up. It's a... Uh, uh, Explosion proof gate, this big gray, grayish or grayish blue, you'll see it. And it limits the, the, the pressure difference between the inlet and the outlet. Okay? So it's going to depend kind of where you got your pressure on the outlet. But, but if you're, and I believe it's around 8 psi, um, but if you're running at 7.5 psi and something causes your suction to increase on that input, it's only going to let it go to an 8 psi difference and then it won't let it go anymore. It'll shut it down, it'll start shutting it down or restricting the output. Okay, it won't just shut it down. I don't know what. I mean, does that cover kind of what you're getting yeah. at? Or I mean, we don't necessarily we don't necessarily have a switch that says. If we get above one hg of vacuum at the inlet to shut something down, why don't we sort of have that? I mean, if we have a snowstorm or ice storm, it could seal over the, the filter, maybe possible. Yeah, that's <coughs> why I was just thinking the same thing because it gets pretty nasty around here, especially the road there exposed to the weather. Oh, there is. It's got to be a tent over there. Oh, there it's it's be a tent over there. Uh, Eventually, yeah, I'll be at tent. Oh, okay. okay. It's going to be a wind tunnel on the other. It'll be a tent. Yeah, okay. Again, I think, I think the differential gauge would shut it down before you had an issue from that, or, or, or limit it. <coughs> you're gonna, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a dirty air filter alarm from that. So you do have an alarm that's gonna, it's gonna come up. Okay. If it's severe enough, it'll probably be able to shut the door. These alarms are not gonna be on the status system. It's just gonna be on the wall constantly. I would imagine that it's going to be tied back. The LCP gets tied to SCADA through an Ethernet connection. So it's up. what it's going to be up to is whoever you guys have programming your SCADA stuff. That's a lady because uh, we had to get her some tag numbers. It's going to depend on what she looks for. But all of this would be available to her. So it's a matter of her looking looking for it and what she does with it once she gets that tag that information. Uh, the next page is just the alarm trip monitor. This is where you would go until the salt You had an alarm to see what it actually is. I believe this is in your little handout. If not, I know it is in the OMM manual, and it's a troubleshooting guide list. So it's very good to remember where it's at. This is what I go to if I have a question. It'll walk you through a lot of scenarios. Um, you have a failure to start. It's going to walk you through probable causes. Um, some of the stuff that you're probably going to forget after we leave this meeting. With you. So that's something. I'd say, I'd say of all of this, this is one of the most important things to hang on to. Go down there and check it out then. See uh, that blower number one, this is the local control panel. This is 
the main screen that I showed you. Right now, the alarm was going off. We hit. There is a silence, so you can shut the. You don't have to listen to the buzzer. At this point, you go to the alarm trip display to see what it is, and we've got three of them here. Uh, actually, just two. We have blower placed in service mode. So if it's put into service, you're not going to be able to start it until you put it in normal mode. And we have a skid mounted e-stop. Somebody's pushed the e-stop on the blower inside the enclosure. If we hit this one, we'll probably get that one too. There you go. Emergency e-stop. Pretty good about letting you know what's not right. Okay, that one should go away. Yeah. And then the other one we have is the service mode. We need to go to service display and hit normal mode. We go back to there. All right, service display. Um, here's your inlet guide vanes, your variable diffuser vanes. Uh, in service mode, we can open these, close them, you start your oil pump, now we should be pumping oil through. Um, the water valve, has on and off, but it's it's kind of a reverse valve. If you lose power, it defaults open. So if some, they've done that, so if something water goes stay. wrong, your water stays running. Um, blow, blow off valve, you can open and close, discharge valve, and then you got one for the fan that's up on top to cool the enclosure. And here's this all right, calibration. We talked about you can't do anything with it right now because we're in service mode. If we go to normal, now you've got an activate. And you can calibrate both of them. You see it's yeah. running it open. Um, the inlet guide vane's not going to calibrate. That was one of the switches that got busted off already. So I've replaced it once, it got busted again. I'm not going to replace it until I'm back next time and these guys are done climbing around. Mm -hmm. But the uh, this one will hit 100%. Yeah. Now it'll close back down. It'll find zero and it'll set those two numbers. The nice thing about that is if that actuator arm goes bad, you replace it. You don't have to set anything on that arm. No zeros. It sets it off the switches. Wherever it ends up, that's where it's at. And the other mode was test mode, as we talked about. What that'll do is put it in test mode. You can go back to the main operation page, and it's going to let you start and go Whoever through the whole startup starts, sequence but it won't run it. Right. Here's better monitor page. This is the one we went through. This lists all the transmitter monitors, vibrations, temperatures. Uh, here you've got your IGV position, your guide vane position, your diffuser vane position. Inlet air temperature. This is that differential pressure we were talking about, difference between input and output. Uh, your oil reservoir temp, main motor amperage, your slow speed inner and outer bearing temp temperatures on the blower, and then the blower high speed, inner, outer, and thrust. And here's those are all temperatures, and then you have a high-speed shaft vibration, X, Y, and thrust. 
Hit the next page. Your main motor winding temperatures, bearing temperatures, and then your motor vibration sensors. And then you've got acoustical enclosure temperature. That's the enclosure, that enclosure temperature. That's the one that'll start and stop. Put that yeah. pan up on the top. Um, as I said, these all, you can see them from here too. Here's your air monitor. It just brings up the sub page. Here's your air temperature. Um, yeah, you guys don't have a minimum air temperature setting, so yeah. you're not going to shut down in the winter. 120 degrees, that's going to be your incoming air. The only thing that will really I mean, cause you to have a temperature issue there is if the air recirculates inside. It doesn't pull enough air through to cool itself. And if that happens, there's other problems going on anyway. Um, your oil system, the actual 61. At 60, we have a low alarm, and at 50, we have a trip. At 60, it's going to cycle the oil pump on to warm up the oil, and at 50, it's not going to let you start. And we have a high temperature 150 for the alarm, 160 for the trip. Your bearing temperatures. Um, high speed inner and outer on your blower are at 220 and 230 for the alarm and trip. Your thrust is 194 and 203, same as your slow speed bearings. These high speed bearings are they're a different bearing setup. They're allowed to go warmer than the other ones. That's why the this one is set at 220 for alarm, and your th your thrust and your slow speeds are 194. This the speed if they're at they'll run a little warmer. Uh, blower vibration. That X Y, and then the thrust. And here's your. Motor amperage and temperatures, your three windings, um, alarm and trip set point, outboard and inboard bearing, alarm and trip set points, those are also 194 and 203. And then you've got amperage, your limit, this one limited at 97, alarms at 98, and at 101 at trips. motor vibration. It's just vibration on the motor.